Hello Angular developers. Today we are diving into looping in Angular with a special focus on the new for syntax introduced in Angular 17. We will also cover the traditional ng for method which still works in newer versions. So let's get started. I currently have installed my Angular 18 project that is opened in this VS code and it is currently running in the browser. So let's discuss the new for syntax in angular 17 or 18 angular 17 introduced a new more efficient way to loop through collections using the for block so let me show you the basic usage so let me define an array here in the app.component.ts i will define an array with the name items is equal to it would be an array of the objects okay so let me add few more elements so let's go to the app.component.html i will remove everything from this file to start from scratch let's add an heading for loop and below that i will use this syntax for and this is how it will look like it will take the array that you just created in the app.component.ts and we also have to use the track keyword as well we are tracking by index but we should update it we should use a unique thing to track so here i will use item.id okay now here i can pass an element that we want to repeat so i have used item.id dash item dot name and now let's test it go to the browser and you can see that all of the items are visible that are showing with the help of the for loop now we can also make use of the index and other variables as well so for example here you can access the index variable as well for example instead of showing this you can use index in this way it is available throughout this entire block of the for loop so it will be available in this scope always there are other such special variables as well for example even and odd let me show you as well angular 18 for okay so this is the documentation let me go to the latest version of this documentation and here you can find all of the variables that we can use we have count that shows the number of items in a collection iterated over we have index we have first First means whether the current row is the first row. Last means whether the current row is the last row. Then we have even and odd, whether the current row index is even and in this case odd, okay. You can create variables as well if you want to, to save the this data in your own variables or you can use them directly as well. For example, here you can add this like if even is true, then I will show even otherwise i will show odd save it now you can see even odd even so if we have the fourth one then that would show the odd so let's add the fourth item just to see if that works okay now you can see even odd even odd even okay further if you want to use your own variable you can use that as well by adding semicolon use the word keyword let e is equal to even okay you can use any name whatever you prefer and delete this and use the new variable it will still work there is another very useful use case of even odd is that you can add the background color for example you are making a table in html by using angular you have seen this kind of example earlier that every even row is in dark color or every odd row is in dark color and so let me actually show you in practical so here i will add class actually let's use a square bracket here class dot even and here i will pass the e so whenever e is true it will add the even class on it at this time you will not see any color because we did not style this class yet but uh, let me show you quickly the class that we have we have added you can see even class has been added on these elements and if you go to the scss let's add 
the selector even and add the background color this okay and now you can see it is light color but if you observe it clearly closely you will notice that one row has light gray background color and one row is in the default background color okay so this is very useful to make your user interface better and we can also add another thing that if class so we want to add a class first if first variable is true okay with that the first one can have a darker color so for example here i can add first and background color should be darker let me move it down a little bit save it okay you can see the first item is darker and the other rows are using the even class so let me add the color white okay great so let me quickly explain what we have done here in the component dot html we have used the track expression the track expression is required for the performance optimization we also use the contextual variables like index first we can also use the last one and we also used even you can use the odd variable as well you can also use the count variable for example here you can add total count like this save it uh, let me remove the dollar sign from here okay you can see on every row it is showing the total number of the rows so there is another interesting thing that you can use here we have the empty block as well so if there are no items you can show the default text like no items found so go to the ts file let's set the items array to empty array for now okay now you can see no items found is visible we are getting this error because of the typescript so in the ts file you can just add any array here okay now there will not be any error from the typescript in the html file let me revert it back to add this array data i will also show you how to use the traditional ng for loop so i'm going to delete everything and here i will add the ul tag let's add the li tag and in this li tag i will add ng for so here make sure to use the items now we can see this error that ng for directive was used per in the template but neither the ng for directive nor the common module was imported so if you want to use this directive then you have to go to the app.component.ts where you are using this you have to in the imports array you have to add common module okay with that the error will be gone and this is required only if you are, you are using the old way for the ng4 but if you are using the latest syntax then you don't need to do that and here you can do the same to get the index like let i is equal to index so but this time index is available without the dollar sign and same for the even and odd let odd is equal to odd okay and you can do the same here you can add the conditional class like this class dot odd is equal to odd okay and with that the odd class would be added and here you can add the number of the item and the item name like this and if you inspect element you will see there is a class on every odd row or div next i will show you an example by looping through the objects so for the objects you can use either you can use any method like latest for syntax or the old ng for syntax so let me show you both examples one by one so here i am going to delete this for now and in the ts file i will define the property profile is equal to an object and i will add all of the values in the profile object abc.com and you can add all other information like this okay now i want to loop through this object keys so for that i have to create a function object keys and it will expect the object and we will return the keys of this object by calling the object dot keys function 
now go to the html and here i will use the for syntax for and in this i will add the variable key of object keys and pass it the profile object that we just created i am getting this error because the track expression is required so here i will add semicolon and add track for now i can use the index like this okay within that i will add a paragraph or any element and we will display the key that would be the property name of this object and we will display the value we are getting this kind of error that element implicit implicitly has an any type so as this is a quick tutorial so i will just add type any here instead of using any kind of interface okay now all of the errors from typescript are gone and if you go back to the browser you will see all of the properties along with their values are visible now you can make them bold by wrapping it in the strong tag like this and you can also capitalize them like you can add a class here or you can add a style here whatever text trans transform capitalize save it now all of the properties are starting from the uppercase letter you can do same with the traditional for loop as well for that you can just delete this syntax and in, on the p tag i can simply add ng4 is equal to let prof let key of object keys and pass it the object profile and now everything would still work in the same way you can see everything is still working now next we will work on the nested loops nested loops work with the both syntaxes so let me show you a quick example so we will create an array with the name groups so let me remove everything from here for now nested groups or nested array of groups with items array in every group okay groups is equal to array of objects and every object is going to have some name and items okay now i will remove everything from in the html and let's add the for directive here and here i will use group of groups track group dot name okay now we will add a heading as it is suggesting group dot name save it all of the groups are visible and here i will add another nested loop in this way li tag and here i can add for loop again like this for item of group dot items and track item dot name and let's move the list tag with between this for loop like this and here i will use display the item dot name in this way okay you can see we have groups and items are visible with the help of the nested loops next i will show you how to loop with the async data that is very straightforward for example we have a function like that uh, get posts and we'll have to inject the http service so define the http property is equal to use the inject function to inject the http client service and make sure to provide the http client so for that if you're using angular 17 or 18 you have to go to the app.config and you have to add pass a function provide http client like this but if you are using the older versions than 17 then you can import the http client module in the import array of the app.module okay let's close it and now here i will return this dot http dot get and we are hitting this remote endpoint json placeholder dot type code dot com slash posts it will return an observable okay now let's define a constructor here that will call this get posts function and i will define a property items or posts or you can just call it directly you don't need the constructor as well so that's fine 
now go back to the app.component.html and add the for loop again and here i will define post of posts and use the async pipe and track by post.id actually we are getting this typescript error because we did not define any type so here for now i will add generic type here any type array okay if you save it you will notice that the error will be gone but in the real world applications i would highly recommend to use the real interface you should have created the interface and use it here then you will be able to leverage the real power of the typescript in your angular projects okay great now we can display the data in that post object so we have created few divs h5 tag with the title and the body paragraph save it and you can see all of the data is coming from the api request so same approach would be for the traditional for ng4 directive as well so let's quickly talk about the performance optimization the for syntax requires a track expression that we always add like this which helps with the performance but in the case of ng4 you can use a track by expression so that is not compulsory thing still works but that is not good practice for the sake of performance so in that case let's actually fix it here you have to add ng4 like this and add let post of posts and use the async pipe and actually let's use the correct variable and here i will use track by we have to define a function track by fn okay this is not defined yet so let's go to the ts file and define a function and this function will receive two parameters first one would be the index second one would be the entire object in this iteration okay so now i will simply return the value that should be unique so if there is an id in the item then we should return it okay so just let's return it we can add type or use type any in these parameters okay great now everything is still working with the traditional for loop all right and there you have it you have learned both the new for syntax introduced in angular 17 and the traditional ng4 method for looping in angular the new syntax offers some performance benefits and a cleaner way to handle empty states but both methods are valid and widely used choose one that fits your project's needs and angular version i hope that this video was useful for you if that's the case then please don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel and click on the bell icon to get notified for my upcoming videos if you have any questions or feedback or suggestions then please leave them in the comment section below i will do my best to reply them as soon as possible thanks for watching this video see you in the next one goodbye